Uh, we have two names here. Dong, so we're bringing back Dong Yan Wang. And uh, Dr. Gu is after? Oh, is after. Okay, that makes sense. So welcome back. And you're going to talk a little bit more about uh, your project. Yes. Okay, welcome. Hello. Yeah, Dr. Gu is going to uh, uh, do the joint presentation with me, especially about the demo at the end. Hopefully, you will like the demo. Uh, so as we mentioned earlier this morning, uh, this is a one of the projects we incubate on top of the Deep Brain Chain's uh, decentralized AI platform. We are able to utilize the platform to quickly develop the AI solution in the last uh, three months, and we achieved a pretty good initial results. And now this project become an individual uh, in, uh, application project that we are pushing uh, to the market. Uh, so we call the project, it's called Vision X, uh, with a capital X because we want to have this project to enable cross-industry AI. So as we mentioned, the, the market is very, very big for Industry 4.0 or intelligent manufacturing, no matter uh, which name you use it. Uh, in that, there is a huge market for visual inspection, but it's not only visual inspection, it's also like robotics, pick and grab, predict maintenance, all the other markets. The Industry 4.0 is going to be a huge market to use AI. I think a lot of people, uh, especially coming from China, Germany, and even US, uh, there is a booming of the advanced manufacturing. Uh, we already kind of see the early trend of that. However, it's very hard today to do um, industry AI. So you look at different countries, so there are, these are the strategic focus from China, US, and Germany, the different names. China call it uh, you know, Intelligent Manufacturing 2025. Germany called it Industry 4.0. Uh, in the US here, we call it Advanced Manufacturing. And we have seen some critical industry trends on this because the manufacturing industry is going to more about the individualized or customized products, which means in the old days, you may have assembly line to manufacture a car or home appliances or phone for probably a few years. Now you're going to manufacturing that probably for only a few weeks, or if not, that's the only one because personalized product you're manufacturing for the consumer product. The, the labor cost is rising. Uh, and the quality become much, much more important because uh, if you just sell the product, you don't have differentiation, the very, very good look and taste of the product, it doesn't sell well anymore, right? So all these uh, different industries we are saying, uh, no, no matter you are in consumer electronics, you know, you are in the airplane, uh, you are in the medical devices, uh, textile, uh, fashion, all this have very, very good, uh, you know, demand on, on quality itself. However, like I mentioned earlier briefly, why the companies are not deploying AI or deploying AI widely? Uh, like I mentioned, I work for uh, quite a few manufacturing companies before, Samsung, my dear group. This is the number one, number two largest consumer electronics companies in the world. Harry, uh, my colleague, worked for Panasonic, uh, Konica, Minota, and a lot of other you know, top Japanese uh, manufacturing companies. The fundamental problem here is there's no good AI solution for a customer to deploy first. So it's a chicken egg thing. People always say, hey, you give me a good solution so I can deploy it, I can begin to see business benefits, then I can begin to collect more data for you and for me to improve this solution even further. The question is there's no such a solution without my data. And like I mentioned, collecting a data for a very low chance uh, defect rate is very, very hard. Right? If you have a 0.01% defect rate, it will take you a long, long time to collect any, form, any meaningful data. You may you know, try to collect uh, you know, 100 images for your assemb 100 assembly lines per year. So that's almost making it uh, not feasible for company, each individual company to work together. And then naturally people think about how about we have all the companies in one industry to work together? Well, good luck for that because you have competitors in one industry to come together and say, let's share data together so we can develop an AI solution we can all utilize. That, I think the best result we can see so far is some fragile short-term uh, alliance which does not last for a long time. There is no systematic incentive-based long-term system to enable different companies to really put their data together to develop a uh, practical and uh, useful AI solution, which will benefit everybody. Will benefit everybody in the industry, benefit the whole industry. So this is what Vision X, we designed the system using blockchain, 
uh, using AI to enable is really try to provide a sustained long-term ecosystem so companies can contribute their, their little piece of data and AI which will really come together. You can think what is almost like the small streams of water getting together into lakes and the ocean, right? We try to really formulate that structure to have the small streams of data and the AI flow together. But there is a structure to enable that. So to enable that, the first thing we, we want to look at the business problem. The business problem, the whole industry 4.0 is a very, very large um, problem. So we try to really focus and narrow down to visual inspection. And we look at the visual inspection itself. It's already a big industry already. You look at the pictures here. This is show you some sample pictures of, for example, consumer electronics. This could be your iPhone, your refrigerator, your rice cooker, any consumer electronic devices. When you get the product, if there's a scratch, dent, right, you, you won't like it. You look at the textile and fashion. You bought a fashion clothes. There's a, some jump rope there and some scratches there. You won't like it. Similar, you bought a furniture. There's cracks, scratches, same problem. If you go to a mining uh, or aviation industry, like, like people inspect your airplane, there's still uh, fatigue to see is there any cracks, minor cracks on the, on the wing of the, uh, the airplane or on the roof of the, the cave or on the transportation belt. All those are similar issues. Automobile, if you have parts or even the body itself has scratch dents, all those things. Same thing for LCD, there's a black dot uh, on the display. People are sitting in the dark room. If you go to Samsung or other LCD manufacturers, you see a dark room of, tw uh, of a few hundred people, right? Look at the bright light of the LCD. Try to look, is there any dark spot on there? Very, very much hurting the eye, but there's no better way to solve it. You look across all these issues. These are all different industries. These are all totally different issues from the surface, but fundamentally, you look at them, they're all looking for scratches, dents, and holes. So there are common issues, you can look through them to have common generic solution, although it's very hard to solve them. So what we do uh, from VGNX, from an AI perspective, uh, we believe that's our key differentiator number one, is we actually, through our combined 30 years of experience, we actually defined and collected a unique data set for cross-industry visual defects from we mentioned earlier. So these defects uh, have a very different variety of the images and based on this we develop a good enough generic solution which we believe will offer over 95% accuracy to recognize those common issues like scratches, dents, and holes. And then from that we can offer to the customers, you can deploy in days uh, into your problem and we can say, hey, you can benef uh, enjoy your benefits right away and from there you can collect more data. So each customer can benefit immediately, enjoy a solution cheaper than the current solution, much higher accuracy, but then begin to contribute their data. And like I mentioned earlier, right, we'll discuss later, those data of the customer contribution will be rewarded by tokens and the profit sharing as well. So this is the data set uh, we, uh, we have right now. It's over a million images uh, with about 130,000 defect images. This is by far, as far as we know, the largest visual defect uh, data set in the world. There's nobody from publication we, haven't, we have seen has more images than this. And because of this, as we know AI, you have to have good images to do uh, AI, and then you can have good models, and then you can have good results. So our results has been uh, pretty solid, as we will introduce a bit later. Another one is that we actually uh, defined a patent uh, pending uh, algorithm called the datatomy. So this is the unique algorithm try to find relevant data through many, many different data. So this data can be very, very you know, not related. For example, you look at a hole on a, on a steel surface, on a wood surface, all works like a hole on a, on a, on a leaf, right? Like a wormhole on a leaf. They are totally different, but through our algorithms, we can find those images together, and we can collect more data, and we can use those images to train better models to recognize the, the problem we want to recognize better. So this algorithm can help us to crawl the internet to get relevant data and really find more images to benefit our, our algorithms. So this is the result uh, we are uh, testing right now. There is a, a industry standard kind of visual defect challenging data set. Uh, we actually uh, achieved so far the best results on it as far as I, we know. 
Uh, so for example, there are 10 classes, different classes of uh, uh, defects. Some of those defects I can, yeah, as you can see, it's probably hard for your eye to, to see if I don't circle that box. The first one is a scratch, the second one is more like a dent. So you can see if using traditional measures, it can only recognize four classes. It cannot recognize the other six. And even that, the out-of-the-box solution for traditional measures is about only 60 to 70 percent accuracy. Then it require a professional technician to go to the customer site, fine-tune that for almost weeks, sometimes even longer, to achieve that uh, accuracy. For our algorithms, it's really just this is the out-of-the-box accuracy uh, across all the 10 classes, average about 99.7%. So this is where it gives us the confidence to say, hey, we can give to customer. It's a reasonable, good enough uh, you know, uh, algorithm you can use it immediately. And once you have that, it leads to the key differentiator number two. This is a little busy slide, but I want to explain this. If you look at the tree on the right side, as we mentioned, first we have a a good AI solution we can offer to the customer. And we have in our pipeline some very solid leads on uh, working with us because a lot of companies are looking for industry AI solution, visual inspection solutions. So we are working with some of the consumer electronics companies, some of the mining companies, uh, some of the medical supply companies. Uh, they are willing to work with us. And the first one to break the ice is here is the AI solution you can deploy, and you can use. Once they deploy that, they can begin to give us data Right, so when you look at the, the root of the tree here, for example, for any uh, industry, let's say we call it industry X, there are different customers. Let's say there's a customer, the uh, early adopter begin to utilize our AI solution and begin to contribute their data. Their data will be going through our ecosystem, right, uh, begin to feed into the, the larger uh, platform. And every data contribution is recorded on the blockchain, so we know exactly who contribute the data, we know who help us to label, annotate, cleanse the data, and we know if this data is good enough and got selected by our AI development into a data set, we call the base AI data set, and then we know who used that AI data set to develop an AI solution for the whole industry, and then we know who used that generic AI solution to develop a customized solution for the, for the, for the next customer. Right. So all this is recorded on the blockchain. We know everybody's contribution, and we give token reward uh, based on this. So this, that's number one. Number two, because all this AI solution we developed, and our customers using their data help us to perfect the solution even further, both for the customer itself and also for the industry, we have much higher chance to sell these solutions to other customers. When I sell to the customer number two, guess what? the solution's profit will be shared across the ecosystem as well based on people's contribution. That means that customer number one, because he made the early contribution, he can get profit uh, distribution, profit sharing from the future customer sales. So from this way, we encourage more customers to jump in, not only benefit themselves, also benefit the whole industry and other customers, but they get the incentive immediately by sharing a piece of the pie of the profit. And as we are growing the industries and growing the customers, we foresee first in certain industry, we will have more and more customers joining us. And take an example, let's say if, assuming this is a hypothetical, right? Let's say Samsung joined us with a good solution. And then we can see GE or other companies, my idea, begin to join us. Then this cross-functional, cross-industry uh, solution become more and more mature, right? And then we can see other industries, for example, medical, for example, fashion clothes, for example, mining, uh, begin to grow. So we can see this p ecosystem potentially can serve thousands of industries. And then on top of this, uh, people can de de develop very specialized uh, products. For example, you can have a generic solution for cracks and dents, all those things. But you can develop a specialized solution with much higher accuracy, for example, only for stainless steel metal. right? For example, for stainless steel refrigerator, I have this uh, special solution. And you can even go further to say, this is for textured stainless steel refrigerator. Right? You can do that as well. So as you specialize, the accuracy will go higher, and then the solution require more specialized data. So we can see this can grow into millions of different AI solutions, which will benefit the developers, benefit the data contributors, and benefit the customers as well. So from this angle, it's a little bit different from a lot of the blockchain project is really about consumer oriented. This is really a, a B2B oriented. Just because a lack of B2B oriented blockchain project in the market does not mean 
this, pro, this kind of project cannot be successful. Actually, it's on the contrary, the industry AI side badly need solution and to tie different people together to collaborate. We believe we address uh, a unique problem and it's a huge problem, it's a real problem uh, over there. So these are some of the business, potential business partners we're work, we working with. And we are actually attending the uh, smart manu intelligent manufacturing. I think I keep saying smart manufacturing. The official translation is intelligent manufacturing per Ch uh, Chinese government. Uh, we are attending that uh, a big conference uh, in two weeks uh, in, in China, uh, so which will have all the top manufacturers in China. We hope we can share our solution. Uh, this is our roadmap. Uh, so basically, we are forming this project is just incubated this quarter. Uh, so now we're in Q4. Uh, we are starting the ICO process, uh, starting from uh, private sale. And then uh, when the time mature, uh, hopefully the market pick up a little bit, uh, we can go to the public sale as well. But we have customers. Uh, we have, uh, so we are shooting for having pilot customers starting with us uh, in the Q4 as well. So this is one of the projects that we believe we are going to see customers and revenue much faster even uh, before you know uh, we have the the ICO in place. So this is our the three patents pending uh, for our algorithms and uh, the data, and uh, we believe this visual inspection is only the first step. Uh, we can expand into a lot of other. Uh, industries. I want to call, make a call here. This is not only for manufacturing. So even we call the industry, uh, it's, we don't mean only the industrial, right? It's the industry. This could be, for example, like here I mentioned, we can source all the procurement data from all the companies. Then you can have visibility of pricing, right? You can have the uh, collection of all the voice AI data or handwritten, uh, you know, Chinese character, or English uh, character data, and you can form a cross-functional, cross-industry data set for which will benefit the whole industry. So which, which will, you will break the monopoly of some of the companies who control the data. Right? It can be used for any industry. So from that, I will hand over to uh, uh, Dr. Gu here to just go through a quick video with our demos. Uh, hopefully, you can see a first hand of how uh, the accuracy in it works. Yeah, and this is the uh, this demo will show our uh, Vision X the first and initial AI solution, and we can detect the surface defect in a very complicated uh, background, and uh, this system can support the live video from uh, camera and also stored image. The camera uh, live video can go to our booth, uh, booth and we will show the live video. But here, the video is show the, the store image. How to play. So this image set is actually developed, developed by the German uh, AI society. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to detect defects on the surface of textures. Open the menu. Select your picture from your file. Let's open the picture file for demonstration purpose. Choose a picture that has a good surface. Open the menu again. Classification is good. There is no defects on the surface. Let's select four good pictures for classification. Now let's select a picture with a surface defect. This is a surface with blurred texture. Let's select classification. It is not passed. There is defect on the surface. Now let's use the function of segmentation to detect where the location of defect is. Following the red box, we can see the location of the defect. Now let's choose four more pictures with good texture surface. So this is very challenging for the even the people also very difficult. To this is another surface with defect with blurred texture. Classification failed. Defect is shown. Through the red box, we can see the location of the defect. Let's choose three more good pictures with perfect surface for classification. Then let's choose a picture with defect on its surface. This is a surface with scratches. Classification failed. Defect is shown. Let's use segmentation function again. Now we see the location of the scratch. This is another texture surface. It also has trace of scratch on its surface. 
Classification failed. Can you stop? Defect is shown. Yeah, this is a very challenging and because of uh, the development in 2007, during these 10 years, basically it's, uh, it's hard to achieve the, the very good result. As Dong Yuan's pre previous slide showed, we are used uh, our new technology data economy and also based on the limited data set, achieve the best results so far. Yeah, and also use the single uh, training model. Yeah, I, I think as you can see, some of the pictures is really hard even for eyes to see what's a defect. But once we highlight, uh, you can see the defect. Uh, I think the important piece, uh, piece two takeaways, uh, hopefully you can get here is we are a solid company in the AI space. Uh, that's the first and foremost, we can give a good solution to the customers. But we have, uh, we set a mission, really try to help different companies in the same industry or across industries to work together uh, to collaborate together to really make a solution better and benefit everybody. And we hope VisionX uh, ecosystem can help enable that. Thank you very much. Just uh, stay up there a second. So, um, I'm not an expert at all in this, so probably like the audience, it would be great to clarify a few things. So, so is this a traditional machine learning training set kind of model, or is it... Is it's there a, a deep learning it's deep, element? It's deep learning. It's, it's deep, deep learning. learning. Yeah. Traditional task, but we use the latest technology to solve. Yeah. And, and uh, is there any neural network or yeah. neuromorphic? Yes. yes. So we use the, uh, we kind of have our own algorithms of the, the deep learning models. Uh, the, co the comparison is actually traditional methods using pattern recognition, right? So those issues has been there for, like uh, Dr. Gu mentioned, he has been working in this space for the last 20 plus years, and yeah. uh, in Panasonic, even 20 years ago, they are working on this, it's very challenging, right? Yeah. So even up to this point, it's very challenging. But the deep learning definitely gave us a better way, but the problem with deep learning is you don't have enough data to, yeah. to to see this kind of scratches. That's why the first thing we did is we use our data atomy measures to collect a, a big chunk of data yep. and then use that to develop a better model. And when customer begin to use this, we'll have more data. Right? So, it's so, form a loop. so in a way, you're, you're leveraging the blockchain and crypto to bring <laughs> owners of data together with the service layer yeah. so that you can incentivize bringing data. Yes. yes. So now yeah. you can uh, solve a lot more problems. Yes. So, so I you think I understood. Yeah, when you see incentives, I think you think about this as three set of incentives. First, we give customer a good solution. That's yeah. already incentive number one, right? That's actually the most missing part right now for customers to jump into this. And second one, we give you tokens to give us data. And second, be, and third, because you give data, we, give, we share the profit of all the future AI sales. I think it's very hard for companies who is badly looking for a solution and doesn't have a solution yeah. to, to refuse this. Because even without a token and the profit sharing, they would love to have a solution 30% cheaper than the competitors anyway. Right. Yeah. So, so TensorFlow is kind of infrastructure. <laughs> you are, in a way, the layer above uh, where, where you're it's the application of algorithms yeah. to data. Well, going back to DBC, uh, DBC has a decentralized AI platform, has TensorFlow and all those training softwares. So we train our models on the deep brain chain platform using TensorFlow, Cafe, and PyTorch, those things. But we developed the model uh, using our own data sets, and now we're going to bring the pilot solutions to potential customers uh, to try out. And are you yeah. guys talking about the ICO? Mm. Um, obviously, People talked about being in a bear market, and I, I actually don't like that characterization because I think all innovation is a bear market. Because most innovation, people don't believe in it until it works. Uh, and, and so it's always a bear market. The reason you know that is it's always hard to raise money. If it was easy to raise money, everything would be a bull market, right? So it's always a bear market. So I don't worry about that. But I do think the ICO market has changed. Uh, who is investing and how much has changed. Uh, have you thought about, has that impacted your planning for how you're going to raise money? Well, I think definitely because the overall sentiment is different. Uh, the 
I think originally uh, investors are telling us, hey, there's no problem. You can raise $30 million for this type of project. That we really think because you, have, you will have revenue. Uh, you will have revenue to even go back to buyback tokens to burn them. So it's not something you cannot, many of the projects I think people can never see any revenue, right? So we have a real revenue here. But of course, uh, the last few months, people tend to be more cautious, right? So we are uh, focusing on the product itself and the, and the real customers. Uh, yeah. Of course, we are going to work with the market. Uh, and I think the, the investors who is going to interest in this market is going to be very different the interest in the consumer-oriented blockchain project. We hope to find the right customers yeah. and the right investors who believe in the future of industry AI and who believe in driving AI solutions across industry rather than for only for certain individual company as a consultant. And is, is the legal entity... Um U.S. based or China based or, or uh, what's the domicile of the legal entity? A blockchain uh, company like everybody is Singapore based foundation. Singapore based. Uh, foundation. And uh, the company right now is run is incubated by the Deep Brain Chain Inc., which is a Silicon Valley company. Uh, as we move forward, we probably will form an individual, uh, you know, Vision X Inc. kind of company in Silicon Valley. That's why I was yeah. asking because yeah. a lot of people are now talking about the need to think about raising money for equity. Yes. And if you do that, you, yeah. the entity is very important. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. thank okay. you so much. Thank that you. That was great. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, round of applause, guys.